Hello, friends, and welcome to the <laughs> Cinemondo podcast. We're going to talk about a, a movie today that everybody's talking about. Everybody. Yeah. Yes. It's in the uh, Oscar chat, too. It's, uh, you know, Guillermo del Toro, who's such a wonderful director. Uh, his remake of the 1947 Edmund Goulding film, Nightmare Alley, starring, I mean, my gosh, Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett. Mara, uh, Tony Collette, Richard Jenkins, uh, Ron Perlman, I Willem Dafoe, Willem I mean, Dafoe. All Pop Alley, just on and on and on. And um, it's great. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful film. We talked about, we did a podcast, uh, you know, a few years back on the original film. And we and did a trailer right. reaction to this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the original oh, film is excited. considered a the, the original film is like a film noir. It's like mm -hmm. a dark, um, you know, right. it's a black and white film from uh many 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 years ago yeah and mm -hmm. there's um there's our, yeah. our anti-hero at the, yeah. the carnival beautifully shot i love this movie i love the yeah. old the old one and i when i heard that they were making a, a remake of it i was like why you know like you wonder sometimes why would you need yeah. to just watch yeah. the old one <laughs> <laughs> but it's guillermo del toro so it's um he brings something to it and it's about that carnival life and that weird freak show world that is so mm -hmm. mysterious that people hear about and you think about these weird geek shows and stuff, but nobody's ever really seen one, you know, because they were <laughs> outlawed and all that. And yeah, and um, but but the idea of it is so creepy and dark. And you remember movies like The Elephant Man and and uh, movies that yeah. go that delve into this weird carny world. And uh, he, I think he's fascinated by that. I think. Um, Guillermo del Toro is fascinated by the weirdness of that era of yeah. entertainment, that type of dark entertainment where you go and you see something where you're like, ooh, I don't want to see this, but I you're glad see those this. times have passed. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks but you know, when I was watching it, it just looks so gorgeous. Yeah. Like the, the, when I watched this, I'm like, it would be really fun to have the job to, to set, you know, do a, a, set dressing and wardrobe on a, a film like this because yeah. just even just this lush you know i Everything, mean right now we're yeah. seeing the the second act um where they're showing all of the beautiful um upscale stuff after he's kind of become famous yeah right right um but you know the the carnival stuff also was just so like gritty and 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 creepy and just had and, I, I think what I liked most about it was this beautiful sort of greenish haze on everything, this green and gold color that was just about on every shot. Just, ah, oh, just love yeah. it. it. It looked, everything looked, you know, appropriately worn and kind yeah. of, you know, down, but also strangely beautiful. Like it was yeah. like yeah. something almost like a Disney ride, like, it, it, but in a way that was just like appealing to watch. So he yeah. just, every shot was beautifully, you know, uh, put yeah. together and, you know, yeah. you know, the composition was there. So it's just a top flight director. He co-wrote the script He's with so his wife, Morgan, and a top flight cast and a great story. And if you don't know the story of Nightmare Alley, it's so unusual and different and weird. Yeah. Like they're never, like you think film noir, you know, I think of, you know, like, you know, uh, the FBI against, you know, some, you know, some bad guys and that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. This is not that. Mm -mm. It's not. It's a much more complex story because yeah. it's about the carny world and it's about a grift. It's about this great scam. Yeah. And the scam is interesting. It's fascinating. I've never seen that before. How do you make that work? You know, you're a mentalist, but obviously you're not reading re reading people's minds. There's a whole, there's a whole trick to it. I like yeah. the trick. Yeah. I like the, the way they uh, unraveled the trick, like where yeah. he meets the woman who uh, is living with the man who actually does the the mind reading. And then he saw his little book about the code language they were using. I mean, that was fascinating. And it really yeah. felt like that probably is really how they do it. <laughs> well, real, real quickly, if people haven't seen this or aren't familiar with it, it's the, it's a story about a guy who's got sort of a questionable past. You don't really know what's going on with his past. Something yeah, dark. Yeah, opening scene is very strange. And he yeah. kind of flees yeah. his, his former life and right. disappears into the world. And he happens upon this carnival, and um, of all places, you know, it's like that's where I would go first thing. And, yeah, <laughs> go to carnival to go to. Go to, go to, carnival. to. They'll accept anyone. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> but he goes to the carnival, and he kind of, he kind of um, just like, sure, I'll work here. I'll do anything. I'll help set up the tent and whatever. And he becomes sort of fascinated by the grift, you know, the yeah. the. Um, 
because nothing at the carnival is what it says it is and that's kind of the appeal of the carnival when you walk into the into that entrance they're 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 after your money and they're mm -hmm. going to trick you out of it somehow and so yeah. there's all these mind reading things and the you know the the electrical girl and the you know the, the carnival barkers the, the geek yeah. and the pickled yeah. punks and all these horrible right. things that they that they've collected that you pay your you know you pay your two bits and you get to see it <laughs> and the geek and he he gets kind of fascinated by that and there's mm -hmm. a mind reading couple that kathy mentioned yeah um you know brilliantly played of course by tony collette who can do no wrong and so, david yeah. strathairn plays david. you know uh you know her uh you know alcoholic Pete. husband yeah. the alcoholic mind reading husband who kept falling yeah. asleep during the act yeah but they had a history together and he was really good at one point and you get the impression that they they used to be something like really amazing but he, they had used the, to play he started, the clubs right and he started drinking wood liquor which sounds oh. just brutal you know that like your turpentine or something you know yeah um and uh he's just becomes kind of useless and bradley cooper's character sort of you know comes in and sort of takes over in a lot of different he ways he's an opportunity yes. to use his con man skills and he likes started. the idea that you can con somebody with yeah. an idea with a word you know and, and right. it's almost like a magical spell and incantation he's got this you know pete has this book and they've put together this stuff that is almost, it's treated almost like magic, you know, the way you, if you learn these words, you can do magic. And so he and his, um, you know, he and, you know, Tony Collette's char character, Zena, mm -hmm. would do this routine where she would say these words like, um, please, can you tell me what I am holding in my hand? And by the inflections and by the use of different words, he would hear this other language in there and he'd be able to say, well, it's a watch and it's an old watch. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's the secret that right. Bradley Cooper's character, Stanton, Stan wants. And he kind of sees, he looks into it and he's like, Whoa, I could make some big bucks with this. And he's really good at it. I mean, he yeah. has, a, he has yeah. an ability, you know, not everybody can do that, but he's good, really good at it. Obviously. Sort of the one thing, like this is a great act, you know, like he's, he's got it down. Problem is he has to have a partner has right. to, and right. he has to rely on this partner. So he, he basically seduces his partner, the, the, right. the woman who did the electrocution kind of gag yeah. on the, in the carnival Molly. So he, he brings her along and then at the same time, he's just looking for another opportunity. And then right. they made sure to, uh, to mention that you have to be careful that you don't start believing it. Right. Like that you really can read minds and you yeah. sort of, you're like, Oh, there it is. That's what's going to happen. And you get cocky. And then he, you know, he got kind of in his head about it <laughs> literally. And I think he really thought he could pull this thing off by doing these big scams um, by himself or with or without the partner. He needed her, but I think he ultimately believed that he didn't need her. And he was like, yeah. this is a way to get rid of my partner. I can right. eventually, you know, do this big score, which is always about the big score. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, I love that time. setting that into motion, the idea that he's with a person who's actually a good person and she she knows it's an act, she knows it's entertainment, but I think he thought it was something bigger than that. So there's that yeah. line that they yeah. mention a few times. It's like, don't do like, uh, you know, Xena tells him, don't do the spook show. Is that what the word for yes. the spook show? Okay. In other words, don't use this as a way to exploit people too much. Right. And also they, getting we, more into the dead, you know, people that have died, you know, doing like a seance kind of thing, you know, it seemed well, like this, into that too. To me, the, I mean, cause Xena does that to kind of save her butt when, when uh, her, her, her man, uh, uh, Pete kind of lets her down. She kind of does that with a woman, you know, your dead brother. His, yeah, but that's her smart. exit. Like, don't do that as your whole scam. And that, but the that thing was is, the I think what it was, was in the context of a carnival, people should expect to be exploited like that. You don't, I right. mean, it's all lies in this. When you walk in, it's like the entrance to Disneyland. When you enter, it's an entertainment. Gate, Right. You are entering a fantasy world. Right. But in yeah. reality, I mean, if you take that into reality and you start going into people's houses and telling them, mm -hmm. I'm seeing your dead spouse or whatever, yeah. and I can, I am hearing communications with them. That's what I think they were talking about. It was over the yeah. line. Right. And that's what happens yeah. the second half of the film. In the original, there's sort of a gradual where Tyrone Powers character leaves the carnival with Molly and they sort of develop this act, a nightclub act. And it, then it goes from there. In this one, it's directly carnival, you know, Molly and Stan leave. And it's two years later. 
He yeah. is already a uh, you know a popular nightclub act at a first class nightclub. He's in the white you know white tie tails you know black tie and tails. Of course, he's greedy. They always are. And so they <laughs> film this, this act in the round, and it's with these obviously you know rich folks, and he gets greedy, like Kathy mentioned, and that's when things start to go wrong in the second half of the film. Both mm -hmm. halves to me were very compelling in different ways. Yeah. The second half is more about this scam that goes wrong mm -hmm. where he kind of partners up with Kate Blanchett and it gets really great. Richard Jenkins comes in as yeah. this, this care, this, uh, character, this rich guy. Who's, Look at her. Look yeah. at her. She's, yeah. she's I mean, stunning. stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Every, yeah. So it, it's just, and this ending, well, we won't get into what happens, but it's no, just it's, so well done and yeah. edgy, edgier seat kind of stuff. Uh, Holt McElhinney in a small role, role yeah. as sort of the henchman. He's great. Um, it's just, wow. It's just it, one of those cl classic, it turns the screws, gets tighter and tighter. Yeah. It's like, it's classic. You're going down the wrong alley, you know, and that's a classic new uh, film noir. The wrong alley, the nightmare alley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, I, I thought like it was. The, the way they went to night, nightmare alley to, to recruit geeks. Right. And I love that whole sad story. And even even uh, our con man, Bradley Cooper, even he was kind of, I don't know about this. This seems a little dark, like where they get a drug addict, they bring him in, act like they're going to take care of him and then get him more addicted and then just force him in a way to get this, you know. But that's the code. Brutal. Like Brutal. He, li brutal. he lives that world, you know, and yeah. that, to him, it's just a job. Yeah. You got to get yeah. him drunk. You got to get him yeah. hooked. But he, it's and they a job. put opium in the alcohol and they yeah. get the person so addicted sad. to the opium. Right. And then, you know, you just lose your mind and, you, you know, you you are desperate. And that's what uh, evidently a geek is someone who will just do anything. I'll I do mean, anything. sad that they keep this guy in a cage. Like, it's yeah. so illegal. <laughs> Even yeah. then. <laughs> like, Even then. Yeah. yeah. But, very, you know, it's very uh, unethical, as they say. <laughs> very unethical, yes. <laughs> It's hard to take like a classic film noir and then redo it successfully, yeah. but it takes a great director to sort of pull yeah. it off. And he made a different film. It's very much the same. Yeah. The script is very much the same, but it's a different film. I would, I, I don't know if I would call it a film noir. I mean, it has all, it just it looks, noir. what's it's that? Neo noir. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit different, but it's, yeah. I think it's just as compelling. Uh, you know, people, some people saying, Hey, it's, it's much longer. It's a good, I think in you know, 45 minutes longer than the original film, yeah. but it didn't feel to me a, like a long film. It felt like it was the right, right running time for me. I actually kind of had a feeling like I wanted it to be a bit longer because there were a few scenes I felt like they kind of rushed through yeah. Um, a little bit. I mean, it. You, you follow it, you know. But it. But the thing is, there were a few things where it was like, oh, he's a he's famous and playing the big swank nightclubs now. Yeah. I wanted to kind of see how how he managed that, how he conned his way into that. Yeah, I wanted to see bit. more of that. Actually, yeah. I wanted to see more of the rise and and also just more of the act in the nightclubs. Do you think yeah. it was like that? Because they spent a good hour, you know, in the carnival, maybe even more, yeah. like an hour. Like I was actually half, relieved oh. to get out of the carnival. Yeah. Like so, it was, I, I thought that was a bit of a drag, honestly. I mean, I when I started watching long. it, I felt like way too much carnival. And I was like not loving it. Like I was like, yeah. this is a slow burn. It was just miserable, miserable. And I was like, I don't know. I was I was relieved. And then when they got to it, I felt like that part felt rushed to me. Like I felt we spent so much time in detail at the mm -hmm. carnival so much right. day to day living and you really get to know the characters i feel once we catapulted into the you know the successful life it kind of like moved along this clip and all of a sudden he's like super famous he meets this woman they engage in this affair and this scam and, uh, and all of a sudden it becomes super fast and i'm like i yeah. would like to see a little more leisurely approach to that and a little less carnival i i sort of like the carnival stuff i thought it was nice to kind of spend some time it's just there. so gross but they were yeah <laughs> yeah it was well, I, I, I like the characters like Ber I, I liked all the characters in the yeah carnival. i like ron perlman's character i yeah. like how he really was protective of molly i like the major mark pavanelli's character i like i, I liked yeah. that and we sort of lost them in the second half i mean there is one scene where they sort of visit, i love seeing them again though i love yeah. seeing them out of their element like they came to his yeah. house you know his apartment yeah. and it was like it was cool just to see them again right definitely right. yeah so there's and a the lot funny to like is those about guys at the carnival seemed less criminalistic than anyone he was meeting outside the carnival. Like they seemed like they had more of a code of honor as, as sleazy as they were than anything that he was doing outside the carnival. 
Yeah. Well, total family. I mean, they look out for each other, you know, in a way. Yeah. So. And there was yeah. a code of ethics there. Like, sure. like we were talking about before yeah. where she was, you know, Tony Collette is, um, kind of suspects that, uh, Tony Collette's character, Xena sort of suspects that Stan is abusing his, um, because she, at the beginning, sort of when they meet, she sort of, uh, comes on to him pretty strong and uh, Slightly. she says, you know, you're, you're easy on the eyes or whatever she says. And he's, he seems like a kind of guy that maybe is like, oh, re really? You know, it, like he's kind of a little bit naive or something. I don't know. Definitely was a naive. He stood in the living room naked. Yeah. He was showing it. He yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take a bath here. You're letting well, me take a bath. Well, the bathtub's right there in the living room. <laughs> yeah, but he's standing there. Like he wasn't yeah. even yeah. trying to be cool. He's Lighting like, a cigarette. And it's like, hey, right. take a look, ladies. <laughs> but he was not not maybe naive in that way but he was kind of like hadn't really learned how to exploit his uh, charisma and his good looks and she was telling mm -hmm. him you know you're you're good looking by the way you could use that <laughs> by the way in case you hadn't noticed bradley cooper yeah you look a lot like bradley <laughs> cooper if you hadn't noticed um and and you know he's thinking you know maybe that's a, maybe that's an important thing maybe that's have. my end you know, maybe i can use this and he ends up, I think that's something that I wish also the film had kind of pushed a little bit more was him exploiting his his charisma and kind of like mm -hmm. insinuating himself into people in, in a way. I mean, they did yeah. they did uh, show him doing it, but you kind of wonder, did he really love Molly? Was Mo But then you kind of realize he's just kind of using her. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. He and, she, she real, and she realized that, you know. Uh, at that point that's funny too um, she had this yeah. grand life with him but she just wanted to go back to the carnival yeah. <laughs> like she gotta get out of here <laughs> well it was yeah she, i had enough and yeah and you know Kate and he was being kind of an asshole too he was and he was having an affair and he was just be, he was just treating yeah. her like trash right and, and then kate cool. blanchett's character is the same kind of thing you, you mm -hmm. get the impression that she is where she is because she maybe you know because she's not a very ethical person either but she yeah. has got charisma as well and good looks <laughs> and uh, and just that, sort of that great office that with that yeah. awesome recording machine um yeah, yeah it's but she's she's a person who's exploiting people as well of course her, yeah oh her, totally with yeah. her whatever she's got you know i love that she had the recording device in her office yeah and yeah. he's so dumb so <laughs> arrogant that he goes yeah. into this office knowing this yeah. and blabs about the whole thing the whole time. Walks in like, yeah, yeah he was an easy mark. Yeah, yeah, we got this. Like totally like incriminating every inch of the way, totally yeah. disregarding the fact that he could not trust her necessarily. And right. there's recording devices in her office. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Ah. But this, I, I'll great. go back to the cast because Mary Steenburgen has a small role, but she's yeah. also very memorable. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rooney Mara is great as Molly. Richard Jenkins, yeah. as I mentioned, is so creepy in, in the last you know, yes. half hour. I loved, you know, that whole bit was just really like, wow, you're so really weird. over your head. This guy is a scary guy to deal with, you know? Yeah, he's formidable you know? and he, and he right. plays that character really well. Mm -hmm. And because he usually plays these kind of soft, likable sort of characters, and he's yeah. great at that too. So I was like, yeah. Richard Jenkins is the heavy, he pulls it off. <laughs> He's kind of a heavy. He's like, yeah, he's an unexpected heavy in a right. in a way. I don't want to, you know, we we don't want to spoil such a new movie, but um, yeah, it's a he he comes into the film as this sort of like, okay, this is scary, and Stan yeah. has to confront this guy with this, you know, he has to, you know, he's conning people, he's conning yeah. wealthy people at this yeah. point, right. and this you don't is feel a guy, sorry for them. Right. I don't feel sorry for these rich well, people getting you conned. Do. I mean, you do. Yeah. I did. I felt like I well, the, the, the lawyer at the beginning. I mean, these people have feelings and hearts, you know, mm. even if they're wealthy. I mean, they it, could afford it, though, whereas some people he was scamming couldn't afford it, you know, so I didn't feel too bad for them. Oh, I think I know, so. but it's, it's, uh, you still start off feeling. I mean, I felt sorry for I feel sorry for people who are being exploited and <laughs> whether or not they have money. It doesn't matter. It's like they they are people who who have feelings and have lost loved ones and and here's some somebody coming along saying i i can see your your dead brother or sister or whatever and he's with you right now and then you, the person is so desperate it doesn't i mean money doesn't matter anymore they're like whatever you whatever you want if i can speak to my loved one and you, it's heartbreaking and that to me was heartbreaking that he was exploiting people like that whether they were rich or not you know
Well, his hubris. A little is heartbroken by that, but at the same time, in a weird way, he was bringing them comfort until it went too far. Like, well, in a weird it, way, they were like, "Oh, he's okay. Oh, we'll see him again." Like, they felt kind of a weird way comforted. Like, there was some sort of resolution. But that's what people say about these TV evangelists who are grabbing paychecks from poor people at, at these huge mega churches on you know TV, and they're saying, "I hear a message from God, and He's telling me that you need to give me." your 10% of your income and and so I can afford more fuel for my <laughs> jet, you know. Those are people who are exploiting people. They're exploiting poor people and rich people, actually. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. I mean, and they say that in the film. It's the same con. It, it's like I'm promising you con. some ghostly yeah. supernatural thing that right. you can't prove I'm right or wrong. And what's it? Yeah. And what's interesting in this one, like his con at the end, even the, even when he sets up what he, what he tells Molly, this is what we're going to do. It's it, like, yeah. I'm saying, oh, hack, are you fucking like, really? crazy? Oh, this no, is not going to work. But it's you know, desperation. It was such a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. 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 Such and a like, bad idea. And the thing yeah. is, he didn't have to agree to that. He was doing fine. He was just fucking greedy. Right. You know, and right. he didn't have to go into any of that. And, well, he's know, being threatened a bit too. You know, it was a bit of a threat. Yeah, but he know. walked into it in a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, he well, got he greedy. Totally goes, oh, I got a big score. And then he's like, oh, yeah, we can pull this off. And the fact he would put her in the line of fire in a I way. Know. Like, if, uh, right. Just oh, such yeah. a disaster waiting to happen. It was like, uh, and it's yeah. like class is like, just this one time. Just and one like, more. Uh, That's such a film noir line. It's yeah, like, oh, my God. It's one thing. And then we can retire. We can go to Cancun and. Right. Live like live like kings. Oh it's my god. Like, yeah. That never works. If anyone ever says that to you in your <laughs> Don't life, believe it. Just it's one never more. true. Just one <laughs> more. One yeah. more heist. It's never true. Yeah. Oh my god. This, so this is the big one though. It's I'm not talking about that small stuff no. I've been doing before. This is the big one. Just I'm gonna do one. this one time yeah. and it's over. I swear. I know you don't like it. <laughs> Walk away. So, <laughs> so that's why it's that's where it's really classic film noir. Yeah. The whole last yes. part's like this is, you know, this is not uh, gonna end well. And um and just Grindel, who is you know, Richard Jenkins' character, yeah. it's like you don't want to if you mess with this guy and screw up, oh. it's game he over. Will destroy you, yeah. yeah. Destroyed. Yeah. And so, you know, and, um, and he again he did it to himself. That's what's so oh, weird yeah. about this that's... film. And it was true in the first one, too, is that you are asked to see this movie through the point of view of this character who is terrible person yeah looks like he killed someone in the beginning and then yeah, disposed right. of the body i'm not quite sure what happened there and well, then we find out you know. sort yeah. yeah well i'm trying not to yeah <laughs> so we don't know what's happening so we're seeing that and then he just seems a little too easy to just start doing the sleazy stuff and then he yeah. sets his sights on the poor drunkard you know easily wanting to replace this guy like, totally like moving in he has right. no conscience so we're, we've seen him like there's some murders We've seen him do it without skipping a beat. He's done some really creepy shit. You know, he's sabotaging stuff. So you're like, here's this character we're supposed to be sympathizing with in a weird way. And we <laughs> yeah. don't really. But when yeah. he's starting to get his come up and you're like, dude, don't do it. And you're like, no, go ahead and do it because you're an asshole. You know, it's like yeah. you deserve everything you're going to get. And so it's hard to to veer away from this likable and it, and it worked in the film too charismatic bradley cooper yeah you, know, you want to sympathize like, like but he's ted bundy not, movie you know? he's not <laughs> well sympathetic. it works because it's bradley cooper it worked in yeah. the first one because it was tyrone power yeah. i mean these guys yeah, playing exactly. against type you know they always yeah. play the hero in their movies yeah. he's an, an as burke said anti-hero he's a guy you still kind of root for even mm -hmm. though you should not root for him you know? yeah no All it's right. bad He's, and th that's why the casting is so smart to do someone high profile like Bradley Cooper, because you're instantly there's a likability factor sure. yeah, that you want to you want to go along for the ride. Right. Um, and you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Right. By the same token. I mean, ultimately, I thought the film was beautiful. I really enjoyed it. I thought the ending was great. It had a great yeah. ending. I thought the big star cast was distracting. I was like a little like the fact I kept seeing, oh, there's William Dafoe. Oh, there's yeah. Kate Blanchett. There's, you know, and I felt like. It would have been, I think, stronger if there were a little more character actors that weren't hugely famous. Maybe let Bradley Cooper be the through line of the big star. I thought the big stars were distracting, but they were gorgeous and amazing, and it was great. I, that was just a little quibble about yeah. like, cast. I mean, you cast big stars, they bring baggage with them. So it took me out of the movie a little to go, wow, Kate Blanchett looks amazing. And oh, Willem Dafoe is so sleazy and fun. And you know, well, I wasn't really seeing the character as much as I've seen the actor. Well, it's like when you see a Willem Dafoe, you think, okay, he's going to be in the movie the whole time. Then you go, yeah. oh, he's not in it. Same with Ron Perlman. He's usually a much bigger, he, he had yeah. a very small role in this. And Tony so, Collette. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She, yeah, she, she, can, she yeah. can she can carry an entire film yeah. in a huge way. And so can those other people we mentioned. And the the interesting thing to me is 
I love Tony Collette, and I'm always mm-hmm. like, if she's in it, I want to watch this <laughs> yeah, movie. Me too. Totally. But she wasn't. She wasn't. She didn't do all that much in this film. She wasn't yeah. really. She didn't really get to push her her limits in this one. Mm-hmm. And like with Willem Dafoe, I was. You know, when I watched the film, you 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 you, you watch Willem Dafoe because you want to see him get all Willem Dafoe on us. You know, <laughs> it's he, like Nick Cage. Needs, Come on, like Nick Cage. Yeah, like <laughs> having Nick thing. Cage in there playing a background <laughs> extra or something. It's like, no, nah, I want to see Willem Dafoe exactly. get nuts, and yeah. I want to see Tony Collette go Tony Collette all over the place. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. she's yeah. so she is so intense. She can steal a film, right? And I don't think she stole this film. She well, like, barely any time. I want she was a catalyst. Yeah, yeah she's basically a catalyst for him. That's all she served was to kind of. But that was her along. character. Yeah, you, you know, she could have. I mean, I hate to say this because she was so good in this, but it could have mm-hmm. been she could that character could have been played by yeah. any pretty good well, that, actress. That you know, at these point, exactly. You yeah. know, it's like we want to see Tony Collette, but she's in a small role, so it could have yeah. been like actor who we really don't have that much investment in so we watching. think oh that's that you know that woman who's you know giving him the the secrets and you're not so caught up in oh it's tony collette and what's right. she gonna yeah. do next you for know? me i'm like expecting her to come back in a big way in the movie same with some other characters, and they don't come yeah. back because they're not part of the story they're not a major character yeah. no they're done yeah. she didn't yeah. really have a big freak out scene mm-hmm. or anything you know yeah. she kind of just plays it low even even at the end there's a scene where they they meet again and you know yeah. It's low key. It's not it's a big key, experience. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, I did love the shot of him walking through the carnival at the yeah. end, just disheveled and yeah. just that long scene of, and the carnival's different and all those yeah. friendly faces, not so friendly and some aren't even there. And it's just, it was different. And that, that was kind of disorienting for me too, because I was looking forward to him, you know, seeing all the people again. But yeah. a lot of them yeah. were, you they're know, there'd been gone. a turnover. They were gone. It was like, and then I was sad. I was like, oh, well, I don't get to see all my old friends. I know, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Well, that makes well, it a, a good movie. That's why it's yeah. a good movie. You come back and you, you're feeling it, like it's a small quibble like... to bitch about the big yeah. movie stars. No, but, I, I'm really yeah. stretching trying to find yeah. something, but that was about it. I got no real quibbles with this. <laughs> no it quibbles. was really fun to watch. And it was really fun. Yeah. Music's it was good. Beautiful. The set decoration, the every, acting, you know, the, the costumes, on and on and on. There it's going to definitely win for cinematography because this was probably one of the most gorgeous things I've seen in a long time. And I was yes. noticing the cinematography, like, wow, this looks amazing. It was yeah. his own genre of color noir, you know? Right. I caught I a couple of scenes in there that I thought might have been practical. Uh, you know, practical for the for people who don't know is a thing that happens actually on the set. It's not something that's mm-hmm. added as a special effect later. Like a practical effect is something that the actors see happening on the set. And it's not added later by special effects people. But there were a couple of things in there that I thought were very old-fashioned looking, which I really love seeing these old fashioned style effects. Like there's one shot of him when he, the beginning of the film where he's on the bus and uh, he goes to sleep on the bus and you see Mm -hmm. the outside of the bus change to, it's like from day, I think it goes from day to night. And, and, (laughs) and it's almost like I have a feeling that they had a um, a process shot where they, they probably had a rear projection outside there and they had a lighting change where you know, as you're watching it, the light changes. Like, you know, if you cover mm-hmm. up your light, like yeah. I'm trying to do, the mood <laughs> changes on the set. It's not like a process. And so he right. falls asleep and the outside goes from daylight to the nighttime of the carnival. And it was a it was a real analog feel to it. It yeah. felt like that happened on the set. That he, That's true. You know, Bradley That's Cooper, the actor, experienced that change <laughs> in the environment. And then he woke up and he was at... He looked out and there's the carnival out there, you know. That's really fun. I also liked how they did that little circle, like go to yeah. black. And the circle the iris. Blows in. I loved that. It yeah. was like, oh, that's old yes. school cute. That's, old school. <laughs> that was that's really even fun. older school than they were going for the, that's the like, of it. That's like the silent film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was really fun. Like but Charlie it's a, Chaplin it, kind of a thing. But definitely a, worth watching. I mean, it's worth Hulu, watching. It's on I, what, HBO. HBO or, Max. I don't even know. Yeah, so yeah, it's Hulu. like you can see this gorgeous thing in your home. Or you can actually go to movie theaters now and see it in black and white, which I want to see it cool. again. I think I would love to see this in a the theater. Yeah. And we have to say that it was, um, you know, it's a Guillermo del Toro wrote it and co-wrote it with his with his wife, his new wife uh, Kim Morgan, mm-hmm. who is a who's also, if you look her up, she's done some really interesting great uh, genre f- stuff, film criticism stuff. Yeah. She's written a lot about films and done yeah. some 
you know, the, the extras on DVDs and commentary and things like that. A real, really uh, fascinating film historian. Yeah. And uh, so she knows a lot about old stuff, likes old films, and yeah. kind of has a feel for it. And I think one of the things about the writing that I always loved to see was it didn't have a lot of modern stuff in it as far as the dialogue. Like, you know, nobody says, well, it is what it is at the end of the day, hands That's down. That's true. It was no, very it was old my... school dialogue. You're right. Right. And, it, and, and sort of a simplified type of dialogue where people would say things that were just, they weren't too flowery or... A lot, of, a lot of cut to the chase stuff. And yeah. uh, it felt like that's how people in 1941 probably conversed. These people. So like I have this. a question yeah. about that. The first film, it was released 1947. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the time frame for this film? Was it set in modern day of the time? Was it basically 1947 that they were in the car? Oh, 19, the this original was, film, I think, was supposed yeah. to take place in the present day. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting that then we have a film where he had to go back and yeah. and film what was present day in the first film, which in a way was a lot grittier, I thought, like almost a little edgier than this yeah. film. This one was almost so beautiful, so glossy. It took some of the hard edges off of it. Um, but I think that was kind of an interesting aspect, the redoing a film that was shot in present day, and then they had to go back and make, you know, the the set dressing and the wardrobe retro, yeah. which was the original film was set in the in yeah. its contemporary time, but which then this remake was set in the time of the original film yeah. or a little so earlier, they, actually. Yeah. Earlier, like six years earlier, which is kind yeah. of interesting. Why wasn't yeah. it 1946? Yeah, why didn't that's right? I thought, you're right. They I think they war. wanted to have the World War II stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Stuff in, you know, the there subtext, was a, that's right. Right. So but there could have been the temptation. I wonder if it was discussed early on. Let's do a remake of this, but let's set it, let's present modernize it. So how do we do that? Since carnivals aren't a big thing, what would we use? How do people con people? And I wonder if they went through discussions about, well, we could make mm -hmm. it like a reality television that people oh, believe God. in. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. You know, I would, uh, evangelical I would, mega church. Right. Yeah. But I would guess Del Toro, you know, who's such a he stylist. He wants that register, yeah. right? He says, I want to, I want to have the carnival look like it did in 1941. Yeah. I look That's what people. I would want to do. Yeah. Keep so it I just. Retro. That's my it would have guess. been so ugly if they'd set it in a in a you know mega church or something or in a you know a whole different thing, right? Yeah, reality. It would television. still be compelling though, but it would be a different thing, certainly. Yeah. Um, but uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, so certainly go. worth watching. And, Definitely. Uh, you know, yeah. and certain, and really don't good. forget, you know, just a little plug for ourselves to yeah. comment, <laughs> subscribe, like, or like, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe and comment, comment. And comment, and, yes. Uh, and if you're only comment. listening, I don't mean only, if you're listening to this as our podcast, come on over to our YouTube also and see. We were during this whole time, we're showing clips. Um, yeah. so you can actually see a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, right. so it's kind of it's kind of fun to watch our uh YouTube channel because we're not just we are just talking heads, but also we're showing like pretty stuff. <laughs> yeah, and you get to see how beautiful and charismatic um I we am. are. <laughs> so uh I mean Burkis. <laughs> Burke is the Brad Burke is the Bradley Cooper. That's uh, right. Kathy is the Kate Blanchett. Oh and, my god, I uh, thought you were gonna say Tony Collette. <laughs> I was like, I, I would deal with that, but it'd be a little disappointing. Yeah, she's well compared uh, to Kathy uh, Blanchett, maybe. I don't know. But Tony Collette, I like her. She's she's cool. amazing. Yeah, she's great. Hereditary forever. And so I guess that yes. makes Mark Bradley Cooper. That's just where we ended up. No, no, yep. Burke is Bradley Cooper. I'm uh, oh then you're Willem Defoe. Okay. Well, that's not so bad. Well, <laughs> I'm okay, Tim Blake be, Nelson. I want to be Tim Blake Nelson. Tim Blake Nelson. What about the guy who's a bodyguard? What's his name? Colt. What's, yeah. what's the bodyguard? Hey, I'll take him. Holt, Holt, yeah, he's not. He's good. All right, yeah. enough of that nonsense. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> you guys have to watch the film to see who do you think we look like. Right. Yeah. Comment. Don't forget to comment and don't say that I look <laughs> That's like pathetic. <laughs> We're oh, very sad. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks very Come much. Bye. Thanks see you next for watching. Time. Bye.